What's up, y'all, man? It's Jonathan Owens here, another episode of The Word Spoken. Man, we got a good one today. Man, do me a favor. If the last video has been blessing you and all the other videos, subscribe and like. I really appreciate it. Let's jump into this. Now, I know you're waiting to see what I got to say. Now, <laughs> it is a shocking thing when you find out what this thing about God you didn't know. Now, let me go over basically like a disclaimer or just a public announcement because I want you to understand that me saying this thing about God and the scripture saying this doesn't mean X, Y, and Z are not true. What is X, Y, and Z? Let me, let me tell you, let me show you. So first, God knows all things, past, present, and future. He knows all possible outcomes, he, everything like God knows. Yet, what makes God a personal God to us, what makes him a personal is that he has feelings. That's partially too, not partially, that's all the reason why we have feelings and a lot more stuff. We have feelings because God himself has feelings. So God, we got, we established that God knows all things. He knows, he knows past, present, future, potential. He knows potential outcomes. He knows what would have be, what would know. He knows what would have been, what would be, and what is. So where am I going with this? <laughs> so now also, even though, even though God, well not even though, but God is self-sufficient. What does that mean? What, what, what does that mean? It means that our praise can't add anything to God or take away from him. So we don't we don't add anything to God by praising him. We don't we can't take away from his glory by not praising him. It doesn't matter. He's self-sufficient. So our praise to him is not for his benefit, it's for ours. So where, where am I going? Stay with me. Where am I going? Now, I want you to know all these things because I want you to know that this is true. Even though what I'm about to say is still true, all those things that I have said are true. They still they still reign supreme. So I don't want you to think that doesn't mean that the other thing that I'm about to say is not true. Or they contra contradict in, in, uh, each other. So now here's the kicker right here. The shocking thing about God that you did not know. Even though God knows all those things and knows every potential outcome, God hasn't yet felt everything to feel. You're like, what does that mean? Dude, what are you even talking about? <laughs> well, Genesis 22 and 9 and 12 kind of talks about it. Now, if you don't know this story, I'm going to talk about two, two things. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is this story. Now, if you don't know this story, this is when God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. He was like, I want you to go up, sacrifice your son. But he, but God kind of like set him up. He kind of like, meaning like he didn't let him know everything that was going to happen. Because he said that, he said a, well, first when he got, he was getting all the way up to the hill and everything, getting all the stuff prepared. And God kept telling him a lamb would be provided. A lamb will be provided. A sacrifice will be provided. It's like I'm, I'm, it's, a sacrifice is gonna be provided. And then, and then when God finally told him that it's gonna be your son, he took his son up. He took his son up, and they, you know, got him all together. Well, he got everything all together. And right before he was getting ready to, like, sacrifice his son on 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 the, on the stake. The angel of the Lord said, stop, don't do it. And that's when God, God showed him the, the, the lamb that was coming to take the place of his son. Now, this is the kicker right here. <laughs> the Lord says, now I know that you basically you truly have faith in me. Now I know that you would do the things that I've asked. Which, what, do you, what do you mean now you know? Like, don't you all, don't you know everything, Lord? Haven't you always known I was going to do this? So what do you mean now I know? Tony Evans' commentary breaks this down beautifully 
and I'm going to read it to you because he explains this perfectly. Listen to what his commentary says. Listen to this. Now, it says, When the moment of truth finally came, Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. Thankfully, the angel of the Lord called out to him before he made the cut. Then this individual, this angel of the Lord, said something strange. Now I know. He said that you fear God since you have not withheld your only son from me. Now, many Bible students scratch their heads at this because it sounds like God legitimately did not didn't know how Abraham would act. But God knows everything, factual and potential. He hasn't how, here's the, here's the kicker right here. He hasn't, however, personally experienced everything he knows. For example, he knows all about sin, but he has never personally experienced committing sin, and he never will. God had not yet experienced Abraham's obedience. He delights in experiencing what he already knows to be the case. Just as a wife delights in experiencing the love that her husband proclaims, God wants to feel our commitment. This is why he became man so that he can sympathize with our weaknesses. Man, now if you don't, <laughs> that should be so powerful to you. You're like, what? What are you even talking about? Does this open up a whole can of worms? No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. What what it actually means is that it shows you that God is, he is personal. He is actually not just some ethereal spirit up there. He is something that actually is a being that has feelings because God knows tomorrow. God knows tomorrow what you're going to do and that you're going to praise and worship him. But since God is outside of time and we are stuck in in time, he doesn't get the feeling, the enjoyment or the feeling of that praise hasn't happened yet for us in time because we're stuck in time. When that's when that feeling comes, then God's like, oh, now it's, it's, it's in actuality, meaning it already happened because he already seen the past, present, and future. But in actuality, in time for us, we had not yet praised him. So the emotion and the praise that we gave him in that moment, he now gets to enjoy that moment. Just like he said, he's like, he gets to enjoy what he already knows to be the case. He already know that you was going to do that. But to actually be being done in person, I mean, in real time for us, he now gets to say, man, that that feels good to be praised. That feels good. That, that the enjoyment of the, the, the all the sacrifices that we that they gave him in the Old Testament, the the, the lamb or the goat, whatever um, the lamb on the on the state, that sweet aroma that came up. See, God already knew that the Old Testament saints were going to do that and put. Is the, the lamb on the altar or on the, on, the, on the stake. But that sweet aroma of the, or the sacrifice or the, the, the altar and the sacrifice, yes, hadn't yet arisen yet to him. So even though he knew that the smoke was going to come up and rise up and he was going to be pleased, that situation hadn't yet happened in real time for us. And so God is not limited to that we are but because he's past present and future there's some things yes that that guy he he already did his part but he's waiting on us to do our part so it's like guys like, i'm waiting on them to do their part and with that comes satisfaction in the moment when we do that it, it, it is it, it is mind-boggling and, and shocking but it's not just one passage not just one one passage that 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 shows that I can show you. I'm about to show you another passage that okay, this is what it is. So let's look at the, the next one. Now, this one is really interesting, and hopefully, you, you like. Hopefully, this is doesn't. I'm trying to explain it. Hopefully, it doesn't like make you think too much, and where you you're like, man, this can't be true. Just 
hear hear all the word, hear the explaining, hear, hear the hear the theologians, hear the commentary, whatever it is, hear it, and just really dive on it and, and take it. And so that's that's my my hope for you. And so Genesis six five and seven. Most of you probably have heard this in spurts at different times from different people, but probably I don't know. Probably most some people probably avoided it because it was too hard of a passage to to wrap your mind around. I understand that too. So Genesis six five through seven. Here is when we know God is getting ready to destroy all of mankind. God is getting ready to destroy all mankind. And he looked down on their sin and it says, I want you, I want you to see it right here. It talks about the Lord saying, I am sorry that I have, that I have ever made them. And it grieved the Lord that he had made mankind because of the wickedness and the perversion that they have done. Now I know this is a hard verse to understand. This is. This is some people's translations might say, and the Lord repented that he had made man. The, the better translation of that would be, and the Lord, and the Lord was sorry. But then some people still might say, which is accurate. and be like, okay, how does the, how can the Lord be sorry that he had made man? He already knew that he was going to sin way before he created them. Way before he was created them, he already knew that they were going to sin. He already, he already knew. He already knew that that um, Adam and Eve. He already knew Cain and Abel. He already knew Noah and all everybody. He already knew all of that. So how can he be sorry? Did he make a mistake in creating everybody? Did he make a mistake? No. Let me explain to you why that is. Two things. The, the, the first thing is that this word right here, where it's in the Hebrew, is talking about being sorrowful of something. So what is that? That's a great moaning and, and grievance in the heart for doing something. It's a great grievance and sorrowful posture of the heart because you have done something. So you're like, but, like, but God already knew it. So how can he be? Remember, but remember, I told you, <laughs> there's a difference. God knows potential, reality, past, present, future, every outcome, what would be. But God has not yet experienced everything in real time for us. So when, <laughs> when we do those things, God already knew that we were going to sin. He already knew that we were going to misbehave, do all that corruption. But when that corruption actually took place in real time, in the time that he created, like for us, because God created, he created time for us to live in. So what does that mean? That means that thing had not yet taken place. So God basically know that the, that that action from us was going to take place in the timeline. But yet it had yet not happened. So the feeling of watching us sin was so hurt, hurt, you know, like harmful or hurtful. That's the better word. Hurtful to him. Even though he knew he was going to sin when we were sinning in real time, it was hurtful to his heart to watch us sin. The second part matches up with what I, was, what I just said. You, if you have children, when you have children, before you have children, you and your wife know that your children are going to make mistakes. They are going to sin. You already know your children are going to make you so upset that you're not even going to be able to look at them. Like you just know there's going to be times where they're going to do things that are that that are that sinful or that, you know, disrespectful, whatever the case may be. However, you know, a lot of parents, they, they know that they 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 know that they, before they had children, their children was going to make them upset and sin and mess up, stay out past curfew, whatever it is, do something super boneheaded that they were going to. They knew that, but they still decided to have children anyway. Why? Because of the, the joy and love of that. 
And the same thing, even though the parents knew that they were going to sin beforehand, when that sin took place in real time, their heart was hurt. So the parent, you can say the same thing about uh, God knows way more than parents, but it's still the principle still remains. Parents knew that their children were going to sin before they had children. But when that actual sin take place, you can't go around, turn around, and say you already knew your children were going to mess up. You already knew they were. So why are you getting mad at them? Why, why are you why are you feeling bad? What you mean? It's because when it actually happens, because we are emotional creatures and because that emotional part of us comes from God, when we actually feel something in the time that it happens, we are driven or not driven, but we are emotions come up upon us. And that's because we have that emotion. So for the Lord, he already knew past, present and future, everything that was going to happen. But because he placed our life in time, God is actually waiting on us at certain timetables and certain situations. He's waiting on us in certain situations. God is sovereign. He's 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 adjusting everything the way he wants that uh, past president. He's adjusting everything. But there are things that God is actually driven or going by because of the time that he put us in. So, I do hope you understood that. And so, I hope you understand all these things. Man, I mean, it, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it is simple. But it's not easy to understand. Now, to wrap all this up, I'm pretty sure there's other passages that talks about this. But these are just two. These are just two that talk about it. And so, these two right, these two right here. Are just two of the just the, the powerful ones like like man and so people can spend their whole life trying to understand <laughs> man what does this mean man this is this is crazy you know this is real crazy but i get that so but i hopefully i broke it down it so you can understand it and i hope that you have a better sense of these things and it hopefully it drives you closer to the lord to know that he actually cares about us, has real emotions, that he loves us, and that he sent his only son to die for us, and that he rose again on the third day, and he is looking to save you. So give your life to him. I, pr I pray that, and I thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Peace.